Hello, welcome. My name's Dave Hicks. We're going to do some chemistry. Today we're going to continue on with our acids and bases unit with a section of it we call neutralization. So here's what I expect you should be able to do at the end of this. Uh, we're going to see what neutralization reactions are all about, be able to predict the products of a neutralization reaction, and then we're going to be able to write balanced chemical equations that represent these neutralization reactions. So first of all, neutralization reaction, that's any time we have an acid and a base that react together. And the products here, hopefully you know what these are, but I'll just quick review. It's a salt and water, right? The water comes from the hydrogen and the hydroxide of the acid and the base, respectively. And the salt is what's the other parts, either the cations or the anions, that are hanging on to the acid and the base. So uh, down here we have a look at one hydrochloric acid and it's going to react with sodium hydroxide. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to predict what the products are going to be and then we're going to create a balanced chemical equation out of it. So uh, hydrochloric acid, that's HCl and sodium hydroxide, that's just an ionic substance, NaOH here. Oops. And what are we going to get? Well, one thing that you can be sure of getting every time here is water. Huh? And then the other thing is, now the water is made from the hydrogen and the hydroxide. See? H-O-H. -H. When they get together, they're going to form the water. So the other parts of the acid, the chlorine here, and the sodium of the base, those two are going to get together as well, and they're going to form sodium chloride. Now, the sodium here is in the front because it's positive, so over here the sodium is going to be in the front, and chlorine is in the back, and so over here it's going to be in the back. Now, what you might want to do is check out what the charges are for the sodium and the chlorine. And so, uh, if you remember right, group one metal, it's plus one. Chlorine's a halogen, that's a minus one. So plus one, minus one, they'll cancel out, and it'll just be NaCl. A quick way to know what the charges are is just to take a look at how many of them that we have here. So with the chlorine, I only have one hydrogen. I know it's plus one, so the chlorine has, excuse me, has to be minus one. And I know that the hydroxide is minus one. There's only one of those, so the sodium has to be plus one. So that's a quick way you can check the charges if you don't want to pull out your ion chart. Otherwise, a safe bet would be to pull out that ion chart and see what their charges are. So there we go, a neutralization reaction, acid and a base. I get water, and in this case, I'm getting table salt, right? And um, there it is a complete balanced chemical reaction. Let's try another one here and then I'll let you go with one. This one here has something a little bit different. I'll point it out to you right now. Do you see that two right there? Yep, that's going to change things just a bit. However, when I take my sulfuric acid and my potassium hydroxide and react them together, one thing that's not going to change is I'm still going to get water from the hydrogen and the hydroxides. The other, the salt that I'm going to make, is from potassium and sulfate. Now look here, sulfate, there's one of those, and there's two hydrogens. That means that this sulfate, and I'm going to just scribble it down here, must be a minus two charge. One hydroxide is minus one, potassium group one metal, so it's going to be a plus one crisscross and the formula that I'm going to get, crisscross to cancel out those charges, right? The formula I'm going to get is going to be K2SO4. All right, so there's my prediction. I'm going to get potassium sulfate and water. Now I have to worry about balancing this. Now, remember this two here? This makes this what we call a diprotic acid. 
a diprotic acid. We call it a diprotic acid, di meaning two, right? Protic meaning protons, because a hydrogen ion, what is that? That's just a proton, isn't it? It's a hydrogen with one proton and one electron, and it's lost its electron, so it's just a proton. We call this a diprotic acid, meaning it has two ionizable hydrogens, two hydrogens that can break off of that. Since it has two hydrogens, that makes this like a double acid. That's what I kind of call it, a double acid, a two-for-one deal. Well, this is just a single base, so if I have two acid hydrogens here, they need to get along with two hydroxides. So the only way I can get that is to put that two out front there. And then over here, if I have two hydrogens and two hydroxides, guess what it's going to give me? Two waters. Check it out. Now I have two potassiums, so that's balanced up, and my sulfate, just one and one, so that's balanced up. And there we go. We got ourselves a balanced neutralization reaction. How you feeling? Want to give one a try for yourself? I bet you are. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear everything off. And I'll pull you up an example that I have ready for you. Has a little bit of a twist to it. So uh, we'll see how you do. Go ahead, press that pause button. Figure out what your acid and base are. If you didn't watch my videos on naming acids, and uh, ionic formulas for writing out for bases, then you might want to check those out. But write out what your acid and base is, predict your products, balance it up. And when you're done, I'll be right here to help you out. All right, how did you do? Did you figure out what those formulas are? Nitric acid made with the nitrate ion, right? HNO3 doesn't have a hydro in front of it, so it's got to have an oxygen in there. And magnesium hydroxide, did you look up those charges? Check out magnesium with its plus 2 charge. So that means I need two hydroxides to cover those two positive charges. How'd that go? I hope you started with that because that would be the key to the rest of it. So over here again I have hydrogens and hydroxides they get together to make waters and then I have magnesium with its plus two charge which you just looked up and I have my nitrate with a minus one charge which you just looked up and so you put those two things together and you'll get magnesium nitrate. Now again, here this time I have a double base, don't I? Two hydroxides here, double base. So I'm going to need two acids to cover those two bases and that'll give me two waters. Magnesium checks out okay. This gives me my two nitrates now to work with with that. Whoops, I think I got a three there. I should make that a two. And that looks like it. Hopefully you got the same thing as I do here. And uh, you're doing fine, feeling comfortable with neutralization reactions. I want you to check me out one more time for this series. I've got one on titrations. And I hope you have fun with your chemistry.